we'll start off by creating an Expo project. Uh, this can be done with React Native CLI as well. But in this uh, example, we're going to be using Expo CLI. So we'll run Expo init ESLint YouTube. We will select the uh, blank template. So here we're going to have yarn uh, being used to install the packages, setting up the project for us. Okay, so that's done. CD into ESLint dash yt. We'll run code dot to open the project folder. Expand this. Here you can see all the files and folders for this newly created project. I'll go ahead and uh, I'm on Mac, so I press Command J to open the terminal. So now we're going to install eight packages. First one is going to be ESLint. We're going to do yarn add ESLint dash dash dev. So this will be in our development mode, uh, not in the production mode. Okay, so that installed successfully. Next, we're going to install uh, Babel ESLint parser. So we need yarn add ESLint. Nope, add Babel slash ESLint dash parser. And this is going to be dev as well. All of these will be. So we'll install that. And I'll open package.json so we could see these dev dependencies are successfully being installed. Next we're going to use the Airbnb configuration for ESLint. So we'll yarn add ESLint dash config dash airbnb dash dash dev so you can see that was added here we have five more packages we're going to install as we did previously this is the uh, JSX plugin Next, we're going to install the ESLint import plugin. Now, depending on your project, project, you may not need all of these, or you may even need more. So feel free to dig in and research some more plugins if you'd like, or only add the ones that you need. This one is the React plugin. So this will give us by default um, rules for React. Uh, the next one is going to be for React hooks. All these are going to be dash dash dev at the end. And last one we have for the React Native plugin. Okay, so we installed the ESLint parser, uh, ESLint itself, the Airbnb configuration import plugin, JSX plugin, React plugin, React hooks plugin, and React native plugin. So now we installed all the packages. Uh, we verified the installs in package.json file. Now under the script section in package.json we're going to add a line that says the following. And this is how we're going to perform the linting operation.
So this line says that uh, when we type uh, yarn space lint, it's going to actually run this command eslint for the following files with the extension .js and .jsx. And this is going to run in our root directory of our project. So depending on the setup of your project, I recommend um, you can come here, you could type either app or src and you can store all of your source code um, inside this file and then you could actually change this to src and then it'll only check in that folder but for right now we're just going to leave it the way that it is so now in the root directory we're going to create a new file it's going to be called .eslint rc.js in this file we're going to need to copy and paste the following feel free to pause this So what this is, is we're saying we're extending the Airbnb configuration. We're using the following five plugins for imports, JSX, React Hooks, React Native, and React. We're going to be using the um, ESLint parser from Babel. Uh, we're saying that we're in a React Native environment, it's true. Uh, you can just ignore this line, this is for um, just testing. Here are the sort of default rules. Um, this is where you can also add or remove rules that you see fit for your project. And this is just saying, should we fetch um, from globals? And in this case, that's gonna be false. So now we're gonna create another file in the root directory. Again, this one's gonna be called .eslint ignore. So in here, since we are going to be linting from the root directory, the root file, we're going to want to ignore some of these files or folders so we don't go through all of them. And the main one that we're going to be talking about is node modules. So as you can see, it contains a lot of folders. So we don't want to be linting every single file in all of these folders. These files in these folders are already pre-set up. Um, they should be configured properly. Um, so we just leave them alone. So what we'll do is in ESLint, we're going to put node underscore modules. So what that's going to tell the linter is don't look in this folder for any of the files. Don't lint them in there. So we'll go ahead, move on to the next part. Go ahead, open terminal with command J on a Mac. We'll type yarn lint. And here we can see we have seven problems, and that's six errors, one warning. Now you can see one error and zero warnings potentially fixable with the dash dash fix option. So what that means is that we could type yarn lint dash dash fix and what that'll do is we'll run it and now we can see that this error was fixed automatically missing space before function parentheses so it was able to fix that on its own so now with these other six problems that we have we can hold command and click on the file and it'll take us to the file and we could see the problems here are underlined red. So we could hover over it and it says react must be in the scope when using JSX. Let's go ahead and import react from react. Okay. Some of these you can also ignore. It depends on your project's configuration and your team's rules for the project. So in this case, it doesn't need to be fixed. 
here we have a literal color. Uh, we could set up a colors.js file, um, set those colors, and then we could import that file and then call the colors from that file so we don't have a color literal in our style sheet. So we can run yarn lint again. And we see we just have three problems. We can check the other file, which is babel.config.js. Unexpected name function. We can just disable that because that's the way that we want it to be. We can disable that because that's the way we want it to be. Disable that. So this one, because it's in the return statement, if we try to throw a comment here, we get an error because we're inside of the JSX in the return statement. So we can't put a comment there like that. There we go. So if we're going to put a comment inside of the return statement, inside of JSX, we're going to need to put a curly bracket slash star. And then we can go ahead and put our comment and then star slash and then a closing curly brace. So now we'll go ahead and run this John Lint again. And now we can see done and no problem. So now all of our files in this project are currently formatted um, according to the Airbnb configuration and the rules that we set for our team's project. Um, so now everyone in the team can run their files using Yarn Lint and make sure that the project looks as if it was coded by one uh, individual scheme so it's not looking like a bunch of different types of formatting for each file. And one more thing you can do is there's an extension in VS Code. It's called ESLint v2.2.6. It's going to be this top one right here. I already have it installed. So as you can see, it says uninstalled here. What you would do is install it and it'll give you um, warnings and the uh, red underlines to show you um, that you're making mistakes in real time with regards to formatting. Um, you could fix them on the fly uh, without having to actually run this yarn link command in the terminal. Uh, one more thing that's helpful is you can go to your settings You can type in editor.code and you go to your settings.json and in this you can see at the very bottom if you don't have this you can add this section. So editor.code actions on save and then inside there you want to say source.fixall.eslint true. And what this will do is if, for example, we have extra spacing here, here, extra spacing here. Now you can see that if we hover over this multiple spaces before at more than one blank line not allowed. So if we run yarn length, we have four errors all in this file. So now what we could do is uh, on Mac, you press Command S and what it's going to do is it's going to automatically fix all of the errors and warnings that are fixable. So we'll go ahead and press Command S right now and you'll see this shift up, this shift over, and this will shift up. There you go. Now let's go ahead and run yarn lint again. 
And now we can see, done. Everything's good to go. So that concludes the ESLint setup for a React Native project. Um, if you like this content, please hit like and subscribe. We'll be putting out more content like this, more uh, React Native um, information, more Expo information. We'll be doing tutorials on how to deploy applications, how to use the Expo API, how to use uh, the React Native API and components. Um, and we'll be doing uh, full builds, front end, back end. So if there's anything you'd like to see, uh, please leave it in the comments. Uh, we'll work our best to try to make that happen for you. Thank you.